no man is going to regard an unguarded temple as being a sacred place of worship. It's dark as obsidian, and it's light and beautiful and bright as the sun, the salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The plug that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. wireless woman and welcome back to my spot room 303 if you are new welcome to the crew but returnees you know what we do if you like this video well then like this video let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe we'll go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome welcome back welcome back my fives to the wireless woman and today's episode is going to be all about thieves thieves in the temple baby <laughs> but it is time to do what we always do and no that's not take over the world at least not yet that's Call the roll. I need all of my divinely feminine goddesses to the front of the class to read aloud. All right, so welcome back to all my viewers and subscribers. And again, as always, a sincere thanks to all my Wi Fi women and my Bluetooth brothers for showing back up for another episode of The Wireless Woman. If you would, go ahead and like the video on the way in. You know how the algorithm works. I don't do this just for you. I mean, I do it just for you. But I also do it to build a community of people for us to engage with because I really believe that as we make comments and grow and learn, and of course, your feedback definitely helps me to tailor the content in the channel to our growing community. I really, really appreciate it. Like if you could understand how precious it is, you would understand how much I value it. And I value you. I value your time and energy that you bring. I also want to give a special shout out to Ja Freedom, also Ja Free on the Beat, who did my theme song. I've been getting a whole lot of compliments and comments about the theme song. So shout out to Ja Freedom. I am going to link his Bandcamp link down below. Please go and subscribe and support him because the things that he does are just a complete whole vibe. And he definitely specializes in the eclectic noise, the organized noise that is Charlotte. So I really appreciate you, Ja. You know that. Thank you for my theme song and go support. Go support him, you guys. So today's episode is entitled Thieves in the Temple. And as you can imagine from the title, we are going to be talking about things that pertain to divine feminine goddess energy but this is what i really feel is a poignant message for men as well i saw this meme where this guy was talking about how they were going to be turning away from black women because of better options and it just makes me realize how 
deeply embedded into black culture and society, white supremacy is. And here's the thing, it's here. We got to deal with it. I'm not saying, hey, let's do an apology tour to black men because I don't believe that that is going to fix the problem or explains how we arrived here. So hopefully throughout these moments that we spend together, we will unpack it and decode it and come up with some viable solutions and options to move forward as a people. So diving right into the content, I spoke in my goddess energy, that's what he won't video about how a woman's body is a temple and it is within the walls of that woman's temple that a man is able to worship God, that a man becomes one with his own Godhead. Through the vessel of that woman's body, she produces a child for him and in essence immortalizes that man. She creates something after his own image and she adds to this man's kingdom. She also deifies this man in that she brings more worshipers into his religion, if you will. I mean, if you have children, you know how much they adore their dads, whether their fathers are absent or present, whether they are good dads or lackluster dads, the worship of the father in the heart of a child is worship magnified. You know, it's worship that's greater than even what the woman shows towards the man when she gives him access to her body and her temple. But I think a lot of people have it very misconstrued, the connection between the body and how the things done in the body manifest in the spirit. Within the context of this episode, I'm going to be using temple and body interchangeably. And when I talk about the temple, I'm talking about a woman's body. I know we're in an age, in an era where men believe that their body is just as sacred and precious and delicate as the body of a woman. However, a man enters into your body, you know, the spiritual exchange between what a man offers, the offering of a man versus the sacrifice of a woman are not synonymous. They're not synonymous and never will be. And as a side note, stick a pin in that. I'm going to come back. I don't understand what is going on with that because even if you go 50-50 with a man, and there are a lot of men who say that women want to be regarded as men, that women want to be seen as being able to do whatever a man can do. But equality with men for a woman will always be a step backwards. It's just like what I say about equality with whites for blacks. In order for blacks to be equal, to have equality with whites, they would have to take a step back from the divine order of what God made them to be. And it's not because one race is better than the other. It's about the cultural identity. It's about the pyramids that we have built and being the dawn of civilization. We have always been people who taught and led the way. Not so much nowadays, but my point is we are descendants of the patriarchs and matriarchs of the earth. Why would we ever desire equality with people who had to come to our countries in order to learn how to build cities and irrigation systems and governments? Why would we ever be striving for equality with them? A lot of things that deal with economics and wealth distribution really come back to spiritual curses and magic that's all in that Christian book y'all love to read. But I digress. Back to the temple worship. So because a man enters into a woman, her body is regarded as the sacred place where worship takes place. I mean, unless you're going to enter into him. And if you're entering into him, then he by all means has the right to invade feminine space. And... If a man can do what only you can do by being able to receive his offering and manufacture 
through the death of your body, the resurrection of his image in the form of a child, then by all means, he can be equal with you. But until that day comes, until a biological male can give birth to a child, we proceed as things are right now. With women being regarded as the highest sacred space for a man and the child being the highest, most sacred space of the woman. Like we we're taught that at the head of the woman is the man and at the head of the man is God. However, the man has been created to serve the woman, which is why he's given the directive to lay his life down. And the woman is put into the service of the child. Now, when it comes to protection and provision, it's top down because the man doesn't have the weakness of being delicate and precious and having that sacred space being within him, then it's his job to be a temple guard. That's the thing. Anything that's sacred is guarded. So this is the place where I have to go back to my Sigma female episode where I talked about how a woman, a single woman, an unmarried woman has to be able to operate in both feminine and masculine energy, how her standards and boundaries give rest and protection to her feminine energy. So Anything that's considered valuable or precious is going to be put under guard. And a woman without discretion is a city without walls. So no man is going to regard an unguarded temple as being a sacred place of worship. So a lot of people worship in churches now and don't really have a context for temple worship and temple guards and temple culture. In Eastern religions like Hinduism, you have these temples that were dedicated to these warrior goddesses, goddesses like Kali and Devi and Durga. It's actually where we derive our common word for thug. When people came in to worship and brought offerings, they would rob these people. A lot of times they would take their jewels and hide them in their mouth, like where we get like grills and jewels all over the teeth from. Um, it's from these characterizations of these bandits that used to be in the temple disguising themselves as temple guards. And so a lot of times their sacrifice to these gods would be to rob, murder, and occasionally rape these people that came into these temples to worship. Kali, she is the goddess of doomsday and destruction. This goddess is characterized by sexual promiscuity and violence. Like these two things linked together as being acts of worship towards her. So when we as women are turned from our natural, peaceful, restful state, we are the multipliers. So we are going to multiply whatever type of energy and worship that we accept in our temple. It is the worship that defines our goddess energy, our divine energy. So you don't want to lower your energy by having thieves in your temple, by having people who come to take your sacrifices instead of honor them by people who don't come to sacrifice to you, but to exact sacrifice from you. Any man who is going to become a guardian of the goddess, a guardian of your temple, a man who expects to be deified beside you and immortalized through your body, because only you can give him that. Only you can magnify his image through a child. Only you give him access to God through the worship of your body. So you have to be very careful of that. And any man who doesn't guard your temple better than your temple guards do, any man that doesn't raise the standard that you already have for yourself, 
any man who's asking for your gates to be let down, for Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, if your hair that long, just tie it to a bedpost and climb down yourself, baby. <laughs> if that man can't build a ladder. And that's not to say that once a man has been, and that's not to say that once a man has been entrusted with your temple, that you treat him like he's some peon, some worshiper that's just at your feet. No, he becomes immortalized and deified through your body. You've got to have enough respect and regard for yourself to know that anyone who's coming into that space with you deserves to be regarded because he likewise is allowing you to fulfill the highest manifestation of yourself through his protection, his provision, and his guidance. But he has to be able to do that better than you. He has to be able to guard and protect and bring offerings and sacrifices worthy of that temple. But if that temple ain't got no gates, ain't got no guards, ain't got no walls, ain't got no standards, then what is there for him to regard, to respect, to honor, to worship? Your body, emotions, heart, wisdom is just as much a part of the Godhead as masculine energy. And if you are male identified and having to operate in masculine energy, it leaves this vacuous hole, this vacation in the feminine energy. And guess who's filing in to get it? Men are. Men in various different forms. It's why we're dealing with so much competition. If we are going to embrace, embody, and make the most of being in the age of the divine feminine, we're going to have to go and get all of that feminine energy that we have relinquished. So I see a lot of women that are starting to identify with these males and they get the worship of these men. They receive worship in exchange for them lowering their standards, you know, them getting rid of all their temple guards. You know, they receive the acclaim and the worship of these men. See, I wish women thought like you. I wish women knew that, you know, the man is the head and I wish women would see that, realize that. I wish women would be cooking and cleaning and taking care of kids and having the kids and having a higher risk of being out of work for longer because of pregnancy related complications and taking less on a job than a man does because of a pay gap, but still coming in here and paying half. That's not protection. That is not the protection and provision of your temple guard. And when you lower the standard for worship like that, we all, the, the full consciousness of the goddess body is diminished, is darkened by that type of energy. I know women that do this do not feel responsible to the other women whose temples have been overrun and torn down, but we are building up pedestals and creating a Godhead and a God body in these men that's not capable of protecting and providing and sustaining the goddess, the goddess consciousness. Like where is this path taking us in the long run? Because even the men today are not the men of the generation before. The men of today are, are way less likely to see value in you, provide for you, or protect you without your worship being given to them. When you are the vessel in which worship takes place, the balance of dominion and divinity, being able to express the Godhead is laid in a man's regard for the woman as the weaker, physically weaker sex. However, that woman has been endowed with gifts and powers that keep the balance of feminine energy as being necessary in order to carry out dominion. That's the reason why our community doesn't have any. 
that's the reason why we're in shambles and women are out here trying to take care of the children, the men, the elderly of their community. And these are the, the things that cause us to slip back economically in the wealth gap that are causing us to see upticks and increases in, in you know, in black male shooting deaths in our community because they're being guarded by women. Because women are the temple guards. And they even tell you that we're the sexual gatekeepers. When? How did that happen? It used to be that if a man defiled some woman, her father, uncles, brothers, cousins, sister-in-law, baby cousin Tracy was showing up to say, you're going to honor the commitment that you made in your flesh to this woman. They were there to hold her in high regard and say, you are responsible for her now. So women, if we're going to have to be the temple guards, I'm sorry, we're not also going to be able to be worshiped by these men for being their cheerleaders. We're going to have to hold up a standard. We're going to have to close up some temple doors. There will be no worship in this house until you can honor the goddess as being part of the Godhead, the God body. So if you've managed to get all the way through this video with me, go ahead and drop a headphones emoji in the comments. As always, I appreciate your time and energy so much. I'm really getting to a point where I can start to feel it through the camera. Like when I first got in here in front of this camera, baby, dead, just dead. But I can feel the energy and the time that comes off of people that make comments and watch the video. So please, by all means, keep it up, continue, share this link. But until the next episode, class is now dismissed. I'll see you in the next one. You took my soul from me.